Hello and welcome to Vegas Ace's in-depth analysis, where we inspect certain aspects of gambling more closely. Today, we're going to explore certain clues of probability and how using math can technically predict the future. Whoa! You can predict the future by using probability? Yes, it's elementary, my dear Watson. Probability is more like middle school. And who is this Watson? My name is Joe. Oh, right. Let's just say I know how often you're going to win on crafts, or on that game of blackjack. And by the end of this video, you'll know too. You might remember hearing about probability in your sixth grade math class. Or you might remember staring out the window because, you know, math is boring. But math isn't boring if it can predict the future. So how do we use probability to predict the future? Well, the future is messy, and we can't predict events with absolute certainty. Instead, what we can do is predict how likely it will be that certain events will happen, and that's the definition of probability, measuring the likelihood that a certain event will occur. But how do you measure an event? For example, how do you measure a party by using math? You're actually measuring whether the event occurred or not. Did your party happen? Did all of your friends show up, eat, drink, and be merry? Or did no one show up, and that's when you remembered you don't have any friends, and you sort of ate all the cookies? Well, if a party or the event happened, then you would assign it with the number one. If the party or event didn't happen, then you would assign it with the number zero. So, loosely speaking, zero means that it was impossible for the event to ever happen, while well, one indicates that the event is definitely going to happen. Okay, so now we know if an event or a party occurs, it's a number one. And if it never happened, then it's a zero. But what's the point? Why even assign numbers to events anyway? Well, that's part of the charm and magic of probability. It makes us assign meaningful numbers to things that no one can actually really know anything about. Assigning an event with either 0 or 1 makes it possible for us to create percentages on what may or may not happen with that event. This allows us to make real, measurable conclusions about random events using math. To help me explain this is my friend Dave, who hosts an awesome YouTube channel called Professor Dave Explains. Thanks, Heather. So, a coin toss is a great way of demonstrating probability because we're assigning measurable conclusions to random events. And what's more random than a coin toss? No one knows how the coin will fall, but that doesn't mean we can't figure out the math. There are two possible outcomes, heads or tails, and out of those two outcomes, we must get one, which means that we have a one in two chance that the coin will land on heads. Because it's math, we can say one in two chance several different ways. One in two can also be written as one half, and the decimal equivalent of one half is 0 0.5, which we can also express as 50% or 50-50. So if we flip that coin 100 times, we can expect it to land on heads roughly 50 of those times, and the same can be said for tails. Remember that it's normal for us to expect some kind of deviation from these numbers. But the more times we flip it, the closer the ratio will skew towards 50-50. Back to you, Heather. Thanks, Dave. Now that we know the probability for a coin flip, how do we apply this knowledge to other random events? I mean, how on earth is probability going to predict that my dog actually wants to be a fire truck? or if my snake is going to escape her cage. Don't worry, I caught her. Well, ask yourself these questions when trying to figure out the probability of an event. What are the number of outcomes that can happen with a certain event? So, the coin toss was our event, and we could only have one winner at a time. Either heads or tails was the winner, which means that only one of them could be the winner and not both of them. So the answer to the question is 1. We'll place the 1 here, 
And since we're on to our second question, we'll place a divider next to it, so that way we can tell the difference between the two numbers. The second question is how many possible outcomes are there? With the coin flip, there were two possible outcomes, heads and tails. So we'll put a two next to the divider, and that gives us one half, which, if you remember, is also the odds for a coin toss, which is 50-50. This can also be written down as 50% or a half. My friend Dave will go into more detail about this. Thanks, Heather. So let's try this with something a bit harder, like a die. What's the probability that a die will land on three? Well, first, let's ask ourselves, what is the number of ways that a die can show a three? Since we are only using one die, and there is only one way to get a three on a die, then there's only one outcome that qualifies. We can place the one here, and then the divider right next to it. The second question is, how many possible outcomes are there? There are six sides on one die, and therefore six possible numbers that the die can land on. So the answer to that question is six, and we'll place that number next to the divider, giving us one sixth or 16.67%. Now, what is the probability of it not hitting a three? In that case, there are five other numbers on the die that are not a three, and therefore five outcomes that qualify. So instead of saying that the chance of hitting a three is one sixth or 16.67%, we could say that the chance of hitting any other number besides a three is five-sixths, or 83.3%. However, the game of craps doesn't play with just one die. It plays with two dice. So how would you figure out the probability that snake eyes is going to hit? Let's quickly go back to the coin example. If we were to flip two coins instead of one, then instead of talking about just one event, we're now talking about two. So, with the coin, we now have a 1 in 2 chance, but twice. Mathematically speaking, that's 1 half multiplied by 1 half, which equals 1 fourth. So there's a 1 in 4 chance, or a 25% chance, of tossing heads and then heads again. That means with the dice, we would take 1 sixth and multiply it by 1 sixth to get 1 36th. So there's a 1 in 36 chance, or 2.78% probability, that you'll roll snake eyes. Thanks, Dave. Let's break this down even more. When rolling two dice, the probability of rolling a certain combination is 1 in 36. That means there's 36 combination of numbers that the dice could possibly roll, and not all of those numbers are created equal. There are some combinations that show up much more frequently than others. 2 and 12 are rolled the least because there is only one combination that can give us these numbers. While the number 7 has the most combinations or number of ways that it can be rolled. 7 is the only number out of the group that has 6 combinations. This means that there is a higher probability of rolling a 7 than there is of rolling a 2, which is why the casino will take your money on the number 7 and not the number 2. There's a 16.67% chance the player will roll a 7, compared to the 2.78% chance that they'll roll a 2. And that's why it's always good to know probability before playing the game. Now, I want to give a special thank you to Professor Dave for helping me explain probability to you guys. Go check out his YouTube channel for a more detailed video on probability, as well as more great content from Dave. I'll post a link to his YouTube channel in the description below. Math can be a bit tricky, so if there's anything you didn't understand, or if you have a question about something, write it in the comments section below, and let's try to help each other out. If you like this video, and you want to help keep it free for everyone, then become a Patreon patron. We have several different levels and rewards that you could choose from. And by supporting Vegas Aces, you'll also be supporting free education, which helps people all around the world get a job and provide for their families. Follow us on Facebook and Twitter. Remember to subscribe. And as always, thanks for watching.